In this video, we're going to talk about the tripart insert curve brush, as well as a few more features found in the stroke and brush menus relevant to your custom curve brush. Now, before we start making our own custom insert tri brushes, let's go ahead and take a look at one of uh, ZBrush's pre made ones. So I'm going to hit B, C, and then grab that curve strap 3. And when I draw that on his leg here, so you'll see if we look closely, we actually have a duplicating mesh in the middle, but it's capped by an origin and an insertion mesh. Let's go ahead and undo that. And let's dock our stroke menu over to the side again. And let's turn off curve mode. So it's just going to use this as an insert brush. And we're going to turn on polyframe and get a little bit of better view of the top. It's got a top, a bottom part that are separate poly groups, and then a middle part. That's the basics of the tri brush. All you're going to need to do is make three uh, different poly groups of the same object, capture that as a tri brush, and then you, you can drag it out with an origin, an insertion mesh, and then a duplicate mesh. So Armed with that knowledge, let's go ahead and make our own tri-curve brush. A quick and easy tri-brush you can make is a ZBrush Primitive chain link. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to grab a cube 3D, drag that out. I'm going to make it a polymesh 3D so I can edit it. And if you're getting, if you need to orient yourself in this 3D space, go ahead and turn on your floor. You can see that's our bottom plane right there. I'm going to hit W to go into transpose mode. And I'm just going to use this to kind of shrink, kind of thin that out a little bit. So now we got our bottom piece here, and for our top piece, I'm just going to make a duplicate of this geometry. So I'm going to hit W, hold down Control Shift, and I'm just going to drag a duplicate of that out. So we go to Subtool. You'll see we have one subtool with two separate meshes. So let's go ahead and add some chain link here. I'm going to go ahead and go to Append, grab the ring, go back into Transpose, and I'm going to move this up, and I'm going to hit Duplicate. I'm going to drag up that other ring and put it up here. Now I know in order for this to work I'm going to need to rotate this. So I'm going to go to the deformation menu and across the Y axis and rotate that 90 degrees. So now I've got my top piece and my bottom piece. In fact in order to differentiate between this top and bottom I'm going to go ahead and select that. Hold down Control Shift and grab a clip curve out of here and hit X to go across the X axis. Let's go ahead and make this top part pointy. So now we've got a pointy top part and a square bottom part. So now, just like in the other, the very first example, we need to make this all one subtool with uh, two separate poly groups. And right now they're all kind of spread out. So what I'm going to do is select this top one. Under the merge area, I'm going to hit merge down and then merge down one more time. So when I turn on polyframe, we've got two separate pieces, but they're, um, the poly groups aren't that uh, organized. So I'm going to hold Control Shift. We're going to grab Select Rec so we can change the visibility on these. I'm going to hold down Control Shift and we're just going to show this top part. We'll go to the Polygroups menu, hit Group Visible. I'm going to Control Shift Drag to invert my visibility and we're going to do Group Visible again and then Control Shift Click to bring those both back. So now we've got our one subtool with a top piece and a bottom piece and now all I need to do is put chain links in between here. So I'm going to go to a pen one more time, grab a ring, let's turn off Polyframe. I'm going to scoot this ring up. I'm going to put that right, in, right snug in the middle there. I'm going to duplicate that ring. I'm going to move it down. And I'm going to need to rotate this one. So I'm going to go to uh, Deformation, Rotate. I'm going to click that Y only. Rotate that 90 degrees. Now, this is really important. I need to make sure that these chain links are all kind of interlinking correctly. So, actually, I'm going to move, I'm going to keep this bottom one stationary. I'm going to move this link down. And I'm going to move this link down just a tad. And I'm going to move this top piece down just a, uh, oops. Let's go ahead and mask that out and then invert it. I'm going to move this top piece down just a little bit. All right, so those are all nice. Those all fit together uh, really nicely. So I'm going to go back, up here, go back up here. And remember, these all need to be one subtool. So I'm going to, to take this top one and again, merge down twice. Go to my polyframe. Now we already know this top piece is its own polygroup and this bottom piece is its own polygroup, so we need to group these two middle ones together. So I'm going to Control Shift click that top one, Control Shift drag to invert it, Control Shift click that bottom one to get rid of them temporarily, visibility wise. And then we're going to go to polygroups and group visible. So when I bring everything back, we got three separate polygroups. And in fact, I'm going to group visible one more time. There we go just because that color was a little bit close to this one. So now we clearly see a top polygroup, a middle polygroup, and a bottom polygroup.
And now that we have everything set up correctly, it's just a matter of making your actual insert brush. So remember, you want to set the orientation. So we're going to set it to the side and hold down Shift and just snap it to the side view. Hit B, hit the Create Insert Mesh button, and that's going to give us our insert mesh over here. I'm going to hit Edit, or go out of Edit Mode, hit Control N to clear my canvas. And we'll go ahead and grab a cube, go into Edit Mode, make it a Poly Mesh 3D. And with our new insert brush, if I just drag it on, it's just going to be an insert brush. But we want to add underneath the stroke options or the stroke menu, we can turn on a curve mode. And now when I drag it out, it's going to be, let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. It's going to be our chain link. And remember that very top part was the pointy part, and that's the first uh, part that comes out. It's going to duplicate that chain link through the middle, and it's going to end with the square part. And just like the previous, the vertebrae brush, you can go through here and edit this curve all you want. And uh, there you go. That's the basics of the tri-curve brush.